Now I'd like to show you uh, the new Map Viewer. It's coming out of beta uh, next week. The Map Viewer is a good example of uh, an application that's completely built off of the underlying technology within Esri, from the JavaScript API to CalSite components to hosted feature services. Let's go through a few examples of some of the new features. I've pulled together uh, accident data for both before and after the pandemic. Area in white here is before the pandemic. Areas in yellow are places uh, that you have accidents both before and after. And areas in orange show an increase in auto accidents that you didn't see from the previous year. Taking this data and use the platform analysis tools to aggregate it into one mile cells. Let's create a visualization off of this data. I'm gonna switch the field to percent change in accidents. Smart mapping uh, takes over and generates a quality uh, style based on the background of the map and the data that I have. So we're looking at it from high to low, but uh, I can easily switch to any other theme like above and below. And let's get into the details here and zoom in on this histogram. So let's center on zero, since we're dealing with percentages, so the top to 100. Okay, so pretty interesting. I see areas in blue are areas that have a decrease uh, in auto accidents, areas in red are areas that had an increase. But percentages are tricky. You need to also take into account the magnitude to see if it's significant. So let's add the number of accidents post-pandemic. And smart mapping will add that as a size variable, keeping what I've already defined. From this size variable, I can go in and I have complete control over how that size is displayed. So if I wanted to make it a little bit smaller, I can. Now it's a range, and why is that important? That's because it changes as you zoom in and zoom out. Automatic uh, sizing based on the scale of the map. And we can go into the hide the interface, and you can see some pretty interesting patterns. So uh, you see the highways start to come out as places that have a lot of accidents, but they had upwards of 100% decrease in accidents. And you could see places around cities like Anaheim, Chino, Simi Valley that have had increase. And it makes sense if you think about it, you're not driving to work anymore, you're driving around town. Here's another map uh, that's interesting to explore. This is the relationship between the diversity index and the percent minority at the census tract level. There's a lot of census tracts in the US, nearly 75,000. So that's a, quite a lot of data to load up as a feature layer, but it works pretty well. This relationship map allows you to compare those two variables. Calling out this area in blue, these are areas that have a low diversity index, but a high percentage of minority population. We also uh, have introduced charts. Now these charts can work against your feature layers and be stored in your web map. Here I've got different types um, from a histogram uh, to a bar chart, to a scatter plot. So let's look at this scatter plot of uh, the same variables as the map. So pretty interesting graph. It's a dynamic graph. I see areas on the X axis are the percent minority population, and the Y axis is the percent diversity index. Let's call attention to this area over here in blue. Note that the colors on the map are automatically applied to the chart and we see those areas highlight up on the map. Now let's explore around the map to see how it looks uh, like in different areas. So like in Kansas City here, where I see this area, a very low diversity index, um, but a high minority population. We can go around to different areas quickly by navigating the bookmarks. Now the bookmarks have gotten better within the web map. We can now include the rotation and also the thumbnail. And this allows you to quickly explore all this data interactively. And we end up in Southern California, which is overall very diverse with multiple races living together. Last thing I'd like to show you is with regards to sketching. 
Here I've already pre-sketched out uh, the soccer field. And once I open sketch, I'll go ahead and add the rest of this goal line. Now as I get my cursor close to the field, I see that that line lights up. That's letting me know that I can snap there. And then I can uh, digitize here. And now as I get it close to uh, 90 degrees, I automatically get that snapped to that 90 degree within the feature. And as I scroll down, it lets me know if I'm parallel and which line I'm parallel with. So let me finish that off. We also have a large number of stamps. You can see I've added these flagpole stamps. These are vector symbols. That means they can be scaled at any size and they can be colored in any way. We have nearly a thousand different stamps that you can easily add to your maps. This is a pretty rough soccer field, so let's go ahead and add uh, the skull. Uh, it's not quite big enough, so we'll make it a slightly, slightly bigger. Ah, just kidding, it's actually not that rough. We can uh, go with the cat, better yet, the dragon. So this quick tour of all the features available in the new map viewer is to give you an idea of the type of apps you can build. And also, just to let you know that the map viewer is a great application to create web maps that you can easily bring into your application and write less code.